Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's February 18, 2022. It's a Friday, another weekend in February, and uh, this would be the third weekend, I suppose. Welcome to the program agenda. Thank you for being subscribers of Signal TV and for being viewers of One News PH. Your, your support is highly appreciated. For those of you who want to watch replays and uh, watch at a later uh, hour, you can also watch us via facebook.com slash One News PH. You can also watch us on YouTube by entering One News PH and just look for Agenda. Let's get on with the day with our daily starter, which uh, is very appropriate this morning because our first, first guest uh, seems to live by this. Okay, you were born an original, don't die a copy. Okay, it's a very timely message uh, for many of our young people who have been copying so many things, mga K-pop, etc. And I'm not putting you down for doing that. Even my nieces love K-pop, K-drama, Be His K. But our first guest will tell you, show you, that even here in the Philippines, we have a very unique culture that you can be proud of. And he has brought pride, honor to his heritage. And we will be speaking with him later on the program. But before we go to our guest for today, uh, our second guest will be women and we will be talking about women in the corporate boardroom that uh, I was kind of shocked to discover that in the Philippines marami sa atin akala natin ang dominant uh, group are women in business hindi po parang 15.6% lang pala we will be speaking to uh, two accomplished women in the corporate world and find out what they are trying to do about that situation. But before all of that, let's now go to the front page of the Philippine Star, uh, Friday, February 18, 2022. The Department of Health rejects calls to ease campaign health protocols. Uh, Lenny, other bets, slam Oplan Baklas on private property, while Secretary Duque and the DOH said they cannot forego the necessary health protocols for uh, popularity and campaign uh, purposes. Kasi po talagang nakakahawa pa rin ang COVID-19, even if it's mild Omicron, it still infects people. At, at the top of the Philippine Star, falling COVID cases likely due to low testing, World Health Organization, because... According to the WHO, uh, the numbers that have been going down may simply because hindi nakakapag-test ng maigi or low testing because there's still, uh, according to them, last month, 75,000 people who died all over the world. So between the number of people dying and the supposed lowering of cases, there's a questionable factor. <clears throat> now. That big photo you see there is of the on the beachfront of uh, Boracay, <clears throat> and this was taken February 16, just after the Valentine celebration. Maraming lumayas, the tumakas went to Boracay because Boracay Island has relaxed its restriction. But if you do a close-up look of that image, you will notice that social distancing has been all but abandoned okay meanwhile the bureau of immigration stopped the entry of 37 foreign travelers yesterday or during the week because they were not vaccinated the requirement is still full vaccination okay and as far as the mask mandate is concerned uh, the government intends to keep the mask, uh, face mask requirement until the end of the pandemic. Now, uh, COVID-19 cases reported as of yesterday, February 17, 
2196 and eto na po tumaas po ang bilang ng mga taong namatay kahapon nag triple digit once again uh, 107 people died from COVID-19. So yan po, I will keep repeating and emphasizing that for those of you who are insisting that there is no such animal, sige, magpa-infect kayo kung gusto nyo kami magpapabakuna. Okay. Malacanang, meanwhile, uh, Secretary Carlo Nograles, spokesperson, has said that the uh, 2022 budget has a 3 billion peso allocation for fuel subsidies in reaction to questions about what is the government doing about fuel subsidies. Eh, merong nakatabing pera. Ang tanong, makukuha ba nung driver? Kasi puro mga malalaki at malalakas na operator ang nakakakuha ng fuel subsidies okay or cooperatives the ordinary drivers are not able to get this uh, easily easily uh, hindi naman permanently okay meanwhile local government uh, officials have been told by DILG secretary Ed Año to prevent stop the sale, ipagbawal ang pagbebenta, pagtitinda ng kahit anong gamot sa mga sari-sari store. Kasi dyan po, it is there where fake medicines find a way of being sold. At ako po ay nabiktima na niyan. Nakabili kami ng peking gamot sa kanto. Akala nung, uh, ya, nung maid, eh, ma-okay na dun sa kanto. Ayun. Lalong lumala yung sakit ko. So never again you buy from the kanto, you buy from the drugstore. Last but not the least, the picture on the left bottom part of the Philippine Star. Uh, priests uh, holding a penitentia parada, penitential walk from Manila Cathedral to the Gombursa Monument in Intramuros to Mark the 150th anniversary of martyrdom of Spanish-era Filipino priests Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, yung mga ginarote ng mga Espanyol dahil akala mga rebelde sila, mga revolutionaryo. <clears throat> okay, so that's the front page of the Philippine Star. Now, allow me to introduce our first guest today. And please forgive me if I read the introduction. Kasi alam niyo po ka, naging ugali ko, derecho interview. But it's not, not fair to our guest when I jump straight to the interview because of time. And we miss out many of the little important details about our guest. So for today, our guest is Senator, senatorial candidate Teddy Bagilat. Now, many of you may know uh, Teddy Bagilat, congressman, siya yung uh, bahag congressman, yung uh, kakaibang magdamit uh, sa mga political gatherings. But from 1987 to 1991, Bagilat worked at the DNR as an executive assistant to an undersecretary. Hindi po siya DI o dancer. Siya po ay nagsilbi sa pamahalaan. He also ran for governor of Ifugao in 2001 and won under the Liberal Party. Alayan ba ninyo yan? Akala ko congressman na bigla ay eh, yung pala nag-government uh, official na ay nag-ano, nag-government uh, employee and then governor of Ifugao. He won in a re-election bid in 2004. Uh, he afterwards served as the president of the Save Ifugao Race, uh, Race Rice Terraces Movement, non-government organization that seeks to promote and protect the cultural treasures of Ifugao and its indigenous people. Won in 2010 as a congressman for the Lone District of Ifugao. He continued to campaign for the Rice Terraces, principal author of the Philippine Indigenous and Community Conserved Area Bill, also filed and supported several bills that focus on indigenous rights, Cordillera Organic Law, the Chico River Basin Bill, Indigenous Education Bill, and the Indigenous Barangay Bill. 
other bills Bagilat has authored or supported include the Reproductive Health Bill, Freedom of Information Bill, the SOGI Equality Bill, the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, and Higher Teachers Pay Bill, also the Divorce Bill, and the National Land Use. Yeah, binabasa po natin yan para malaman ninyo na may silbi siya bilang representante, congressman doon sa Ipugao and for the Philippines. Okay, let's bring in a uh, congressman and senatorial aspire, aspirant, uh, Teddy Bagila. Good morning, congressman. Good morning, Sito. Good morning to our viewers. Uh, maraming salamat. Thanks for having me. Okay, medyo uh, kakaiba yung get up mo. Talagang promote mo yung culture ninyo, Kong Kong Teddy. Now, uh, ano ba yan? Special order ba yan? Kasi parang hindi ko nakikita yan sa kung, uh, mga high fashion store or mga <laughs> ethnic outlets. Ha? Mukhang kakaiba yan. Ah. Yeah, yeah. This is Ipuga Weave. And uh, and this is uh, no, this is from Africa. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> At least you're honest about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, Kong Teddy, uh, let, let me get straight to the campaign uh, platforms of Teddy Bagilat. What what are you going to prioritize? Because clearly you have a track record for uh, protecting, promoting indigenous rights. Now, because eh, parang may misconception sa Pilipinas. Na pag sinabi mong indigenous, eh parang taong bundok. Eh marami akong alam na indigenous ang origin pero mas marami pang master's degree sa akin. Yes. Uh, ako, I'll, I'll uh, push what I've been fighting for in the House of Representatives for nine years, so, which is mostly on the environment. Uh, I think meron namang connection talaga yung pagiging katutubo doon sa defense of our environment, particularly on the issue of climate change. Uh, that's something that uh, has really been discussed uh, in, in today's uh, campaign, no? yung climate action. So I'm going to talk about it. And then uh, agriculture, uh, because I was the chairperson of the Committee on Agrarian Reform noong uh, second term ko. During my first term committee on uh, indigenous peoples naman yung chineer ko, mm -hmm. I was also vice chair of the Committee on Natural Resources. So most of the bills na uh, gusto ko sana isulong sa Senado ay yung mga hindi pa namin naipasa when I was uh, congressman. No? Uh, you mentioned uh, si ito, yung National Land Use Act. Uh, there's also the freedom of information uh, as mm -hmm. one of the principal authors there. Uh, a lot of human rights bills also. When, when I say human rights, this is not just about you know fighting the death penalty, but rights of children, rights of uh, the LGBTQ community, anti-discrimination law. And uh, yeah, uh, more or less in summary, it's about the environment, uh, indigenous people's rights and rights of the marginalized. Agriculture, yung po yung aking gustong isulong sa Senado. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I, I noticed that uh, you have uh, legislative agendas or or uh, action regarding the LGBTQ and also regarding the divorce uh, in the Philippines. Now that gives me the impression that you're a modern day legislator because yung mga ibang tao pag nakikita ka nakabahag, eh, taong bundok, uh, ethnic, etc. Now, uh, what is the uh, relevance of LGBTQ and uh, divorce to, to your indigenous platform? Well, kasi nakilala ko as initially, initially, no, pagkakilala sa akin is a indigenous people's rights advocate. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, dahil ka pinagalama mo yung uh, human rights ng IPs, you can't help but also be involved in other human rights advocacies. <laughs> So, mm. so linapitan rin ako ng, uh, ng, I was also one of the principal authors kasi nung reproductive health law, uh, which is essentially a, a women's empowerment law actually, uh, aside from the other dimensions of our age. No? So linapitan ako ng LGBT community who were one of our partners in sa RH advocacy. And they explained to me no, that there is a system of discrimination against LGBTQ uh, community. Kasi ako, initially, akala ko wala. Akala ko, tanggap naman sa Philippines ang LGBTQ. But yeah. maliwanag nila no? that, that they uh, face discrimination in school, in the workplace, no? uh, 
marami silang nata-traumatize, sa stigmatize. So I agreed to be uh, one of their champions no in the House of Representatives. Ganun rin sa divorce eh, kasi divorce uh, unfortunately it becomes a morality issue, pero actually it's also a, a women's issue. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, not just women in the Philippines but uh, uh, very much an OFW issue rin. No, dahil nga kinikwento nila, nagpapadala sila ng kanilang um, remittance sa mga asawa nila. Eh, yung mga asawa nila nakatira na pala sa ibang bahay, sa ibang pamilya. So, uh, even the overseas Filipinos, uh, a lot of them are pushing for a divorce. No? But yung sa aming version is divorce with conditions. So, so again, it, it all boils down to being a human rights advocate, which started uh, during my first term as uh, an uh, indigenous people's human rights uh, activist. No? Yeah. What, what do you mean by uh, divorce with conditions? Because in America, no fault divorce. Yung, uh, iba naman, a divorce based on adultery. But uh, what do you mean divorce on condition? Yung, yung mga ganun, no? the, like adultery, uh, ano to, uh, wife beating, o binubugbog yung mga anak o matagal na silang nakatira sa ibang mga bahay no? so mm -hmm. there are conditions no uh, before divorce is approved no uh, and in fact we're very much willing to discuss uh, if if it could be termed not as divorce because nagkakaroon kasi ng pushback from of course uh, the catholic church but maybe marital dissolution something like that no mm -hmm. uh, but but ang importante kasi sa, sa akin is every Congress, eh, umuuso yung discussions about uh, divorce or marital dissolution. Yeah, the, the problem I have with Congress is uh, you the, your term is usually only three, eh, well, it's only three years. Senators get six, and uh, it's a scratch your back, I scratch, uh, scratch yeah. my back, I scratch your back scenario. What if you only had uh, a chance to pass one bill? What would be that one bill? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> that would be very difficult. Oh, uh, no, uh, but but don't, don't consider it a uh, difficult, Kong Teddy. I mean, a challenge on focus and determination. Ikanga, kasi uh, alam mo pag naipasa mo na yan, madali mo yeah, na ipasa yeah. yung iba. But the thing is, kasi sito, con Congress is a very conservative institution. Uh, the, the powers that be in Congress would rather have the status quo than push for very progressive laws. No? Mm -hmm. Kaya nga sinabi ko talagang mahirap yung mga pinutulok ko mga batas because it's really very progressive in the sense that it addresses the roots of our problem. No? Mm -hmm. But if, if, if there's one law that I'd really like to push, uh, I'll, I'll talk about something that's connected to climate action. Kasi ang, ang climate change, hindi lang naman buhay ng Pilipinas. It's, mm -hmm. Buhay ng buong mundo. I mean, if you don't stop climate change, and I believe in that, then uh, sabi nga nila, by 2030, if, if the temperature increases by 1.5 degrees on the average, then the, the damage to the planet will be irreversible. So, might as well focus on that kung tinatanong mo ako na isang, mm -hmm. isang bill, which is to, to try to phase out the coal and diesel power plants in the Philippines. I say phase out kasi hindi naman biglaan yan, but mm -hmm. there's really a need for the whole world, not just the Philippines, to shift to uh, safer and cleaner renewable energy. Well, that, that, change. That's interesting, Congressman Bagilat, because uh, we do know, you and I know, that Indonesia, who supplies the bulk of coal, for the requirements of the Philippines, because our energy requirement is 60% dependent on coal, sabi ng Indonesia, sorry, sorry, uh, but we have to preserve for our own requirements, for our own uh, need. Now, what is the problem here in the Philippines? Because matagal na natin pinag-uusapan yung mga shift of ener of, to renewable energy. But nothing seems to change. In fact, many of us who have been pushing for wind and solar uh, have faced a, a stone wall, so to speak. Umbaga, puro taxes kaliwat kanan, pahirapan, puro mga requirements, even at, uh, at a domestic level. Pati yung pambahay lang, pahirapan pa. Uh, how, what, what is our problem and how do you intend to solve it? Well, simple lang kasi yung situation. Eh. Coal is cheaper. Uh, 
than than solar and wind. That's what the uh, industry players say right now. No? Mm. I, I do believe that technology improves naman eh. Uh, so dati, mahal nga talagang solar, but now it's becoming cheaper. And there is even a study that says that uh, the cost of producing uh, power uh, is now cheaper pag solar compared to coal. No? So so there is need a need to to have that political will to really say that, okay, let's now shift to, by, by say 2030, let's now shift totally to renewable energy and phase out uh, coal. One of the potentials of the Philippines that hasn't really been explored is tidal energy. Mm. Ang haba ng coastline natin. Eh. So, so tidal energy is something aside from wind and solar that we can perhaps explore no, in the country. But ang radical na isang proposal is to impose a carbon tax. Of course, oh, this is... The... Wouldn't it be simpler to just empower for Teddy Maguila to pass a law that gives all the tax breaks and makes it so affordable for the uh, upper, middle, lower class to set up their own solar uh, generators at home para mabawasan kahit konti yung demand? Kasi parang... Uh, the, the policies have always been for the benefit of industry, mm-hmm. but never mm-hmm. to relieve the consumer. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. No? Uh, we can explore incentives and tax breaks or discounts or even subsidy, which mm-hmm. is what they did in other countries. They actually gave subsidies to people who were using solar. Uh, I think that's what they did in Germany. Until mm-hmm. it came to a point na nawala na rin naman kasi yung nuclear at saka coal plants nila. So the subsidy was taken off. But initially, they had to provide subsidy to households who were using solar energy. Parang sa Texas, they gave, I think, $100 or mm-hmm. I don't know how many hundred dollar incentive for every household na magpapalit ng inidoro, yung old school inidoro to the new technology in Idoro or toilet bowl eh, because they were facing a water crisis, which again is uh, something we are facing here in Metro Manila. But anyway, uh, let's not uh, discuss yung mga yan. <laughs> Next time na yan, Kong Ten, when, uh, uh-huh. Kong, uh, Teddy. But uh, what uh, what other things can, can you offer as a senator? Kasi parang for, uh, ever since you, you became... Uh, publicly known, recognized. Uh, initial label sa'yo, kaliwete ka. Kaliwa, hindi kaliwete. Baka kaliwa ka or, you know, you're a rebel, etc. You you are uh, very different-minded, etc. And so, businessmen, business may not be too, too uh, accommodating or open to a Teddy Bagilat in the Senate. Uh, even the religious uh, find your fashion statement very <laughs> shocking. <laughs> okay, but uh, what what can you reassure uh, the public on what kind of a senator Teddy Bagilat can be? Yeah, uh, uh, ako very clear naman kasi yung tindig ko about a lot of issues. As, as I mentioned, I'm I'm very progressive. Mm-hmm. I look at the laws that really, really address the roots of our problem. No? But at the same time, bilang, bilang isang katutubo, I'm a consensus builder because that's the kind of democracy that we have among indigenous peoples. No? Hindi katulad sa iba na democracy is about, okay, debate, and then let's uh, uh, call for a vote. Yes ka, no ka. For IPs, we, we discuss, we debate, but at the end of the day, you try to build consensus because the decision is usually collective. Hmm. So, so that's the mindset, that's the IP lens that I would like to bring into Congress. No, I, I really listen to all sides. No? Uh, but very clear yung aking position, like for instance, when it comes to agriculture. Uh, right now, liberalization is the one that's killing our, our agricultural sector. No? We're, we're all into imports. So we're a country of food imports, which is hmm. very weird, no? considering that we pinapalibutan tayo ng dagat pero mag import tayo ng gulungbong, ang dami naman nating rice farmers pero nag import tayo ng bigas. And importation was supposed to be just a temporary solution. Mm-hmm. No? Uh, so sa akin, um, exploring really uh, a, a genuine agrarian reform program, that's, that's one, providing subsidies to farmers because the reason why Thai and Vietnam rice is much cheaper than Philippine rice is because 
there's a lot of government subsidy to their farmers. So ganun rin sa akin, no? I, I think we need to provide cap. Binigay natin kasi yung lupa eh, with land reform. Mm. Uh, but we didn't give them the capital, support services, post-harvest facilities. Much of our build, build, build programs is towards the cities. We forgot about the countryside. Would would you agree, Kong Ted, that uh, we would have to send half of our Department of Agriculture abroad to have them sent to re-education camps? Kasi parang, <laughs> sorry, no? Hindi, mahal ko yung DA, mahal ko yung agriculture. Pero puro na lang direct to ground and irrigation planting. Sabi ko, when will this country ever shift to modern farming, yeah. Uh, yeah. hydroponics, aquaponics, uh, etc.? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do agree. You know? I, I think I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, no? pero one of the problems kasi right now is the conversion of land to, you know, to camellia homes, to residential areas. Nako, uh, correct, or gagawing golf course. Uh, yeah, yeah. So ang parang nang nangyayari is there's, there's less uh, focus on the agricultural sector. Anyway, there's importation. Okay lang kung mag-suffer yung mga farmers. Okay lang kung magtigil sila magsaka at ibenta na lang nila uh -huh. ang kanilang lupa. And that's happening. Yes. That's happening right now. It's it's now uh, being more accelerated because of this rice tarification law. That was the law that really broke the backs of a lot of farmers. Which will bring you back to the land use uh, law because uh, yeah. to, to, uh, actually, pag ikaw ay nakadalaw doon sa maliit kong uh, manukan sa lipa, may madadaanan tayo na area hekta hektarya they they literally ripped every coconut and mango tree uh, in the area and it's all going to be used for mass housing nakapapangit naman and sabi ko now i don't know what's wrong with these idiots can't they build uh in the you know around trees and yeah. uh, the, so land use is going to be an issue because uh they're converting agri into residential but uh, they're also violating the environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and we all know who, who opposes land use in the Senate. Uh, <laughs> so that's so where you need people with other mindsets no, in the Senate. Because no? mm -hmm. uh, land use is very critical. Uh, it solves food security. It solves our problem in flooding because uh, you protect the, the remaining watersheds. It actually provides business, the business sector, mm -hmm. no? knowledge kung saan sila pwedeng maglagay ng kanilang commercial and, and industrial uh, uh, businesses. No? Okay. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, na, na, national land use is not anti-development. It mm. provides the business sector a blueprint. Okay, if they want to invest in the city, then this is the land use. This is where you can place or locate your your businesses. It's yeah, I, I, in a and you can... Area. You can integrate farmers. I mean, like resort developers na sinakop na lahat ng dalampasigan sa Pilipinas, hindi makatawid ang manging isda, pinalalayas yung mga mag, mag, uh, magninyog. And I, I've always told them, because I used to be in resort development, that you must incorporate them in the project because you will need someone to provide you fish, clean your areas. Why are you running them off the land anyway uh kong teddy you're running for senator in uh may 20 uh, this year i'll give you a minute to uh to uh, reach out speak to our audience and uh, i do hope makinig sila because you are representing a very specialized sector but you have a very progressive outlook the floor is yours uh, congressman thank you sito and uh, thank you to our viewers uh, if, if you're looking for somebody new in the Senate, no, na iba yung mindset, somebody who's progressive, somebody who has the lens of an IP, na likas na close to nature, consensus builder, then I'm presenting myself. No? Uh, I'm not just an IP, but I'm also a former governor, former mayor, former councillor. I have 15 years as a local government official and nine years bilang isang mamabatas. And that, I think, is something that we should be reminded of. The job of a senator ay hindi magbigay ng ayuda, hindi maging bodyguard ng presidente. Ang trabaho niya ay magpasa ng batas. And that's what I have. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you very much, Congressman Teddy Bagilat. And uh, 
but I will uh, be, I, I will remember you in May when I fill my ballot because uh, I think we all owe you an apology. We uh, prejudged you. Uh, kumbaga, no, eh, we just assumed that you are a warrior, ethnic, uh, mountain person, but clearly you are even more progressive and uh, sophisticated than many of those running for the Senate in 2022. Thank you. God bless you, uh, Congressman Bagila. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that's Congressman Ted Bagilat of uh, the Lenny, uh, Lenny uh, Kiko Party, and uh, yun po, no? Because uh, I'm happy that we actually got Congressman Bagilat because uh, he, he uh, kami dito po sa agenda, pre for all lang aming listahan. Biglang isisingit ng writer, ng uh, guest coordinator, ng EP, etc., ng misis ko, and friends. And uh, from one day to another, I do not control completely who comes out. So when the name of Teddy Bagilat came up, I said, why not? <clears throat> and uh, I'm happy we did because now we discovered it's a very good speaker, nine years in Congress, worked as uh, uh, in, in government in the DNR, uh, served as governor, and is very accomplished. So wag niyo pong kalimutan, Teddy Bagilat in uh, May 20 election, 2022 elections. Okay, we'll go for a quick break. And when we return, usapang uh, uh, kababaihan, but this is not the gender thing. This is about the corporate uh, situation in the Philippines and uh, women in leadership in the corporate scene. Pag-uusapan natin with Boots Giotina Garcia. Lusu, lagi naman suki yan si Boots dito, chairperson ng Next Gen Organization of Women Corporate Directors and Pasita Chit Juan, president uh, of the same organization. We'll be right back here on Agenda. Welcome back to the program agenda. I'm your host, Cito Beltran. And thank you to PLDT for their home fiber optic internet. Thank you, Mr. Marco Borlongan, for uh, supporting the program. At uh, malaking bagay po kasi kung wala yung PLDT home fiber optic internet, kami ay lalaylay sa kangkungan. Now, let's go to our next guest, uh, uh, they are representing the NOWCD and the Next Generation Organization of Women Corporate Directors aims to be the leading organization of women corporate directors in the Philippines. The ratio of women to men in boardrooms, board levels, mga kwarto ng mga bossing pag nagsasama-sama at nagmi-meeting, 15.85% laang. Masyadong uh, matagal na na puro kalalakihan ang nasa boardroom. Uh, although uh, big corporations uh, ang bossing babae, according to 2017 uh, ICD study of women on boards, men are three times more likely to get a board seat than women. Siguro napapagkamala na akong babae kasi sa tandang ko ito, hindi pa ako nakakakuha ng board seat eh. Okay, in the same study, it was indicated that women only make up 
22% of selection pool for potential board directors dominated by men. Kumbaga, nasasala, nahaharang. In the recent 2021 ICD study of women on boardrooms or bo uh, boards, only 17% of Filipinas are in the board seats in publicly listed companies in the Philippines. I wonder, why? Bakit kaya? Let's bring in Boots Giotina Garcia and Chitwan. Good morning, ladies. Morning, Sito. Morning, Boots. Uh, Boots, I think your microphone is uh, muted. I'm sorry. Good morning, okay. Sito. Okay, well, uh, I guess that's the first question. Bakit ganun? Why is it that in the Philippines where the mother, the wife, makes all the decisions <laughs> while we husbands simply go and earn the money, why is it that when it comes to the boardroom, where major policy decisions are made, investment decisions are made, why is there only 15.86% ang nasa board? Bakit ganun? Well, maraming reasons. Uh, Boots and I can uh, do a table tennis uh, balikan Go for ahead. several reasons. Ito. Uh, one is... Uh, ano yung lack of awareness ng mga kababaihan or the women in corporate uh, suites yung tinatawag na C suite CEO COO CMO hindi sila aware na after this what's next do i just retire after the i reach the retirement age or can i be an independent director or can i be a board director So yung lack of awareness sa C-suite no mga magagaling na mga women uh, managers mm -hmm. to rise up to the B-suite <clears throat> na kung tawagin. Okay? And then Boots can probably uh, yes. say the other reasons. Well, to add, that, that's the, dem shall we say, the supply side of the, uh, of the situation. No? On the demand side naman, we cannot, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, we cannot, forget or not consider the fact that there is still a stereotype attitude no? that only certain sexes, particularly men, the males, can become board directors. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget that majority of uh, decision makers, especially in boards, for example, the chairs, the chairperson, and the uh, where they're so-called uh, in publicly listed companies, there's what they call a nomination committee, are also run by men. So there is this traditional or stereotype bias that women are not as qualified to become board directors, not re realizing that having diversity in boards is in fact beneficial for the company. And in, in many instances, as researchers and studies have shown, have actually improved bottom lines and profitability of companies. But, but Boots, uh, Chit, is, uh, and I'm not defending the men. Ha? Sabi ko nga sa'yo, napapagkamalan nga siya ako sigurong babae kasi never once have I in, been invited to a board board seat. Ano? Pero uh, that's just humor on my side. But uh, seriously, doesn't it also have to do with culture and lifestyle? Meaning, uh, in the Philippines and Asia in general, majority of the companies are Uh, and I'm not being, uh, ano, I'm not being uh, racist or uh, making generalization. But in the Philippines, for instance, uh, large many of the companies are Chinese or Filipino Chinese owned, uh, or in, uh, uh, influenced by the Asian value of yung lalaki ang dapat na mumuno uh, sa mga anak sa kompanya, etc. And then in terms of lifestyle. Uh, the men get noticed quickly because it's a boys' club, meaning they eat together, they drink together, they do their kalokohan together, they play golf together, and the women uh, generally uh, choose to uh, either be in the office or be at home. Chip, you okay. want to take that? Yes. Uh, but let's not forget that the SEC Cosmos. Let's not forget the Gotianins. Mm. Let's not forget the Robina Gokongways. Okay. There are these strong women in what you mentioned as Phil Chai family conglomerates. Mm -hmm. diba? uh, 
But what is happening is sa selection, eh, especially for publicly listed companies. In the selection process, to just to echo what Boots said, parang hindi na ko consider yung uh, okay oh, lang the consciousness about diversity is what we want uh, to develop. No, yung consciousness na our board must be diverse, not only in not only in gender, si ito ah, pati age, tiba? Like mm-hmm. now with digital fintech kailangan meron kang bata-bata na director and baka babae pa ba? Mm-hmm. so even including the youth and youthful directors for mga uh, as you go with digitalization etc kailangan publicly listed companies must also look at number 2 their consumers who buys their products 90% of purchases purchase decisions are made by women and ba who, who goes to the okay. grocery? Tinatanong ba yung lalaki na anong corn beef ang binili mo? No, it's always the women who are asked. And yet, women do not form part of the decision-making or policy-making in the boardroom. Sabi ko na nga ba, I'm a woman trapped in the man's body. Ako nag-decide ko anong karne norte bibili ni. Eh. Anyway, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, okay. So, so how do we fix the problem? Uh, do we, because Chit, you were saying na we should uh, bring to the attention of women that they have options and they have choices and there are there is a future after retirement. However, uh, because it is the men's club that is the dominant uh, factor, should you start drawing in the men into your circle? Kasi parang may divide the, uh, ano eh, uh, yung itong, itong situation natin, may, may divide boots na, okay, men stay with men and women stay with women. So, I mean, if you want to influence the decisions, then you have to influence the men. Or am I wrong in my thinking? That's the specialty of boots, yung mga male champions of change. Go boots. Yeah. Well, as an as a women's as the women's advocates group, obviously, leave women should lead this because it concerns us. But we also that we should partner with the men. You know, men should be our allies in this uh, in this advocacy. And uh, as mentioned by uh, by Chit, there's actually we also organize with me as co convener a male champions of change group. These are CEOs, okay, who commit to adapt gender equality in their workplaces. So they are themselves champions in their organizations. So our intention is to bring them on as partners. Because again, as you said, now let's forget the girls club or boys club. Let's all be part of one club working together for this advocacy. And we're not not talking about only about boardrooms. We're really talking about across the workforce, you no. from employee, man- managerial, CEOs, and up to the board level, which I would think is probably one of the uh, key points of a- any person's career, to be sitting in a boardroom. Okay, but uh, how do you, or does your organization intend to go about that in particular, I mean, specifically, what will be your plan of action? Because talking about that is generally a wish list. Hmm. Iba na pag meron ka ng plan of action. Ako, maganda rin si ito, if I may, no, right. uh, uh, let you in on some of our plans, is to uh, not only engage the men, but to also praise the companies that practice diversity. Ni ba yung mm-hmm. praising? Ayaw naman natin ng name and shaming. Ang dami na lang ngayong elections. Huwag na tayong mag-shaming ngayon. So mm-hmm. maybe praising the companies. Hey, did you know that this particular PLC, for example, uh, Ayala Energy, has four women directors. Kasama dyan si Boots. Has four women directors among 11 ba, Boots? 11 kayo? Five and actually out of, of 11. Oh, five out of 11 are women. Di ba? Why? Is it about energy? Is it about Ayala? Or is it about, naku, they become more profitable when the board is diverse. We are not saying you need women on boards to, to be profitable. We're saying you have to have diverse boards. Because there might be boards na marami naman ng babae, di ba? But diversity mm-hmm. is the statement here. Okay, now what are, uh, and 
<laughs> Medyo uh, tricky question to, ladies. Ha? Huwag niyo akong batuhin ng mikropono. Ha? Pero what are the risks of having a predominantly women board? Kasi alam mo, may mga sabi-sabi, there are those uh, biases, etc. or uh, uh, false presumptions that oh, if you put If you put so many hens in the hen house, they make too much noise and uh, nothing gets done. Ay, hindi naman. Hindi naman sa na, too ayara, much. Gagalit ka na okay. kagad sa akin. Na, Sinasa- na, sinasabi no, ko lang. But let me give you an example. Alam mo, oh. so, uh, I was, uh, you can watch her on on um, this uh, international interview, no? Leaders with Lakwa. Si uh, Anya Hindmarch. Mm. The one who made the bag fashion statement na this is not a plastic bag. Okay? Kasi mm-hmm. she was against plastic. Sabi sa kanya, nung mga men, akala nila very emotional ang women sa boardroom. Kaya mm-hmm. merong bias. Okay? Mm-hmm. But you always have to think who are the consumers and users of your products and services. Pag yeah, but, mo, but shit, you can't even get to that point if men are scared of women. Uh, inherently, Then you're in the wrong company. No, no, no. I'm, I, I, no, no. Uh, let's let's talk about it. Okay. okay? Uh, in in most settings, men do not uh, are not emotionally uh, stable. Uh, in general, ah, uh, yung parang hindi nila matek na pagsabihan sila ng babae in in a equal uh, status setting. Medyo very challenging I, to their ego. Uh, how do you resolve I, that? Yung bang, it's, it's, a, it's men's fear. I Kasi think Boots should disagree. Men, men, men among men, parang, uh, okay, ingat lang. Alam naman natin, baka magkasuntukan tayo. Pero men and women, pag nagbangga na, iba yung emotion. Uh, Boots, would you like to tell us your mo, experience? Sito, I've sit, I've sat in many boards where probably can you hear me? I've sat yeah, in yeah. many boards where probably one of the few women I've sat in boards where I chaired the board. Alam mo, ano din yan eh. I think that's also a misconception that men women are more that's not necessary. Women bring a lot to the table, the discussion, no. Uh I think one of the one of the key characteristics of women well attention to detail could be could also be a disadvantage but at least we take a view a, a holistic view of a this of a, an issue before we make a decision on it and that's an advantage I think because it's important a board makes important decisions which could put the company at risk okay so therefore having a female in the board adds to this analysis of a situation to come up with a good decision for the benefit of the company where you are sitting as a board member. Yung emotion naman, he, he, I, I've not really seen that. And, you know, when as a woman, when I present my views or opinions in the board, I don't state it emotionally. I look, I present it with sufficient basis and understanding and found a good foundation okay. so that I can put forward my opinion, you know, without emotion attached to it. Okay, L- let me ask this question because we already pointed out that there's only 15.85% women in most boards in the Philippines. Now, uh, in terms of getting your way, uh, so to speak, umbaga, you make your presentation, you make your suggestions, etc., How much of a woman's uh, contribution in the real wor- work setting is actually adapted uh, and taken in as a policy? Kasi iba yung, okay, nakaupo ka na nga dyan, hindi ka naman pinapansin. Or, uh, sige, sige, no problem. And then, wala rin. Alam mo, I, uh, go, go. I just wanted to say, you know, that's one of the things that we'd like to to train and capacitate our members as well as our future directors. When you have a seat at the table, okay, you must take advantage of it. And, you know, in my case, I can be persistent. I think if you have a point and you're able to present why, then you should be able to convince the 
the rest of your board members to, to go to agree with your point. So part of it has to build to build your ability for self-confidence, ability to analyze, ability to deliver and commit and or rather and convince your other board members. Those are one of the things which we need to capacitate our women for. Okay. So, Chit? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Chit, has there ever been any study uh, that analyzed the contribution and the impact of women in the board? Because you mentioned uh, Tessie Coson, uh, C, uh, Tess, Tessie C. Coson, you mentioned uh, Rubina Gokongwe and Gotianum, etc. These are uh, strong women and they're in the boardrooms, they, they lead the companies. But uh, I've never heard of studies that show because there are women in boardrooms in these particular organizations, these are the direct contribution impact on consumers' benefits or product and the corporate profit. Oh, we're starting the researches now, but abroad, there is an affiliation kasi with Women Corporate Directors International. No? And uh, women directors naman, international a research outfit of Irene Natividad of Global Summit of Women, who's also a Filipina, they made over a hundred studies. There, there are over a hundred studies on increased profitability for diverse boards. So we're not coming from gusto lang namin, you know, there's a McKinsey study. So if even if you Google women in corporate boards, uh, how they contribute to profitability, to sustainability of companies. Kasi ngayon, ang sinasabi nga, to even survive and thrive and be sustainable is already success. Hindi man sinasabi yung talagang increase top line, depending on industry. No? But there are studies, and Boots and I have been attending these global summits for over maybe 14 years now, na it's driven in, in your head na kaya mo Number two, hindi ka nag-iisa because it's global. It's not just in the Philippines. And tayo pa where our gender, di ba we tap all the mga gender managers, uh, mm. female uh, board exec, female executives, we, we are always in the top 10 of those lists. And yet, in boards, there's work to be done. And okay. that's why now CD. Yeah. Yeah. Boots, uh, going back to you now, uh, uh, Chip was talking about uh, recognizing corporations that have women in their boardrooms, etc. But what about the uh, recognition of women in the boardroom? Kasi parang nap, nap, nasasama lang sa press release yung mga CEOs. But it has never been a singular effort to, to present all of these women and what they have achieved. Because I, I remember, no, I, I watched a series, uh, I think it was the CEO of Avon. She was an Afro-American uh, mm -hmm. uh, lady, and I was very impressed. So I started watching it, and I said to myself, but wala nito sa Pilipinas. Parang hindi nakikita yung profile. I can't even get an interview with these women in the boardrooms. Mm -hmm. More, you, you brought out a good observation. Eh? Uh, that's probably one of that's one of the things that we as an organization need to do. We have to elevate and make these women in the boards more visible. Kasi nga, sabi mo nga, uh, of, although of course there is a, now that the government, the, the regulators have actually uh, already in the revised corporation code recommended that board diversity and even uh, well, requiring or uh, expecting companies to report how many women they have in boards. So uh, apart from that, I think uh, it's really important to, as you say, project project these women, not only to, to make themselves known, but also to inspire women who are not yet directors to become board directors. Baka naman pwedeng, as, as you suggest, baka naman pwedeng, Imbitahin mo naman yung aming ding mga, mga board members na very successful women talaga in the boards and, you know, in our, in our membership. Yeah, but, but that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, I think we're hitting the nail on the head here. We don't even know who they are. Right, yeah. So we can, we can provide you a list you can select from the 30 members that we have so far. And we have an intention to even increase our membership. Makikita mo doon, the names that, 
that you will see there, you will be, you know, you will see the kinds of successes and accomplishments that they have made. But do you have strict met metrics regarding this? Because, yeah, you know, to, I, I, to be very honest, and uh, I, regardless of gender, uh, there are also a lot of board members and CEOs in this country that are such because uh, anak sila. <laughs> Alam mo, uh, I, I'd like to address that. You know, our, our, our uh, corporate setting is really, let's admit it, family companies dominate our, you know, business sector. However, Let's not also forget, as she has cited, that they're also qualified family members. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, hindi naman pwedeng maubos, hindi naman ganun kadami ang family members na pwedeng umupo sa board eh. Even because of the supplies issue, more often than not, they will have to bring in non-family members, especially those who appreciate and recognize the value of having what we call independent directors, non-family members who will provide a third-party point of view, which maybe people within the same family are probably not able to see. So, okay, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, we've run out of time, Boots. I'm sorry, <laughs> as you guys know, we always run out of time when we get together. But anyway, thank you. And, you know, little steps, little steps. And uh, now you owe me a list of 30 names, which we in turn will uh, go through and uh, we hope to interview. Anyway, thank you very much, Chit Juan, Boots uh, Garcia, and uh, thank you to your uh, organization, the Next Gen Organization of Women Corporate Directors. We hope Hope to interact with you more in the future. Have a great day, ladies. Thank you. Maraming salamat at sa uulitin, Sito. Okay. And uh, before we go, I have to uh, remind you uh, to witness all the action on the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. Make sure to tune in to the Beijing Winter Olympics channel available for free on Signal Channel 198 SD and Channel 298 HD available exclusively to all active Signal sub subscribers until February 20, 2022. Like and follow Signal on Facebook for more updates on this event and other awesome shows for the whole family. In the meantime, as the week ends, uh, allow me to read the week's blessing once again for all of you. It is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the week. It's a weekend. Uh, re refresh, uh, recharge, and please don't forget to pray. Thank you. God bless all of you. I'm Sito Beltran. Uh, thank you for watching Agenda. Keep it here on One News PH.